I've started a new project. Uh, it's called the Sparrow Game Engine. It's going to be a general purpose game engine uh, that would eventually expand to kind of a, you know, something you can use to make a game with. Um, well, first thing you might notice is that UI doesn't look too great. Um, that's because I just want a placeholder UI for now, not dig into the rabbit hole that the UI is, and focus on the other parts of the engine first. Um, then come back to the UI later. Uh, so first thing is, the engine currently supports directional light source. Uh, as you can see right now, it's completely dark. Uh, if we introduce a single directional light, uh, it's modeled as the sun coming into the atmosphere, and the light gets you know bounced around the uh, particles and gets absorbed and scattered, uh, which kind of uh, creates with this bluish tint on the sky. Uh, it's called atmospheric scattering simulation, and the cool thing is you can change the light parameter and the sky color changes, and it produces a nice gradient. Uh, try to simulate real life. Also, another thing is, as I'm looking around, the intensity of the uh, light kind of changes. That's because of a uh, eye adaptation model as well. Uh, which can be tuned here and there's also the option of going manual so everything stays fixed uh, next thing is the uh, model so the engine supports currently GLTF file format and the philosophy is I want this engine to be completely uh, kind of physically based for the rendering part and GLTF is pretty uh, Fitting in that aspect, as in the material model, is completely physically based. So, the first model I chose to adapt is GLTF. Here is a helmet. We have some fancy gizmo. We can move it around, scale it. Um, but as you can see, the reflection isn't too great. And because the centerpiece is so dark and we're using center weighted metering, uh, the lighting is kind of off. So. There is the option to bake probe. What it does is it bakes a distant probe, assuming no visibility occlusion, um, just kind of does a, uh, bakes the environment lighting into a cube map, and it does this uh, UE force uh, splits some approximation uh, to approximate the reflectance equation in real time. So this looks pretty nice, and um, there's also the option to go with HDRI. So let me just get rid of the lighting for a second. Uh, here's some pretty nice uh, environment map I found. So if I do bake probe again, you can see with this more realistic environment, it really brings out the, uh, the photorealism in this technique. Also the uh, the engine also already supports translucency. Say if I load flight helmet, taking some time to load the model. But the thing you need, uh, you want to notice is that the uh, the goggles on a helmet are translucent, and to handle that case, uh, I do a separate pass for translucency. Uh, and the uh, for a multi-layer translucency, I do depth peeling to ensure correct order of uh, blending between the translucent pieces. So if you look at the goggle, you can see it's see-through. It has both specular lighting and the uh, diffuse lighting, which is pretty nice. And the last thing is, let me just go back to procedural. Um, we also got some built-in models, so we got a plane. Let's just expand this so it's like a ground floor or something. And next thing is the animation. So GLTF animation is pretty annoying, but you know, to work, it's it's a it's a good compromise because they got good material model. Anyways, 
Uh, here is a model I got from uh, Maximo. Comes with pretty nice uh, animations. So a big probe. What we can do is animation clip select whatever animation it's got baked in. I can cl click a uh, loop. It displays the animation, which is pretty nice. So that's the maximal model example. Also got a fox from the GLTF2 samples. Uh, if I remember correctly, fox is quite big, so we gotta scale it down. And let's see, loop, yep. So you can see the unlit part is kind of dark, so we can sort of switch to manual or we can go to automatic and set a uh, maximum value so we can see the shadow part more clear. Uh, this sort of acts like the uh, poor man's exposure compensation graph. Um, but yeah, I think this is pretty good progress. And eventually other systems are going to be put in, like the scripting system, uh, collision system, physics engine. So yeah, this is the current status so far.